So now we're going to talk about another interesting principle that is uh, very, very well developed in the Vedic tradition. It's the idea that is encapsulated in this phrase, bhavat bhavam, which means from house to house. So bhava, remember bhava means the existing, existence, the concrete. Um, so it means a house, like the existing final thing or the final product would be the bhava. Um, that's, so, so yeah, bhava, that's the subject case for it. Bhavat would mean from the bhava or from the house, and then bhavam would mean the house in the object case, like objectively, the object of the sense. So, um, bhavat bhavam means from house to house. I just wanted to figure out, explain some of that since we are kind of trying to teach a little bit of like more well-rounded like Sanskrit basics and yogic philosophy and stuff. Um, and so it's this idea that we count from house to house to learn more things about a house or to or about anything. So say your first house is you. So everything from that is, you know, relating to you for the first house here, if we're in Aries, or let's just pretend we're a Gemini. This is the first house. Um, so I'll put the little line there. So if you're a Gemini um, and you want to know about your, say your mother, you would look at your fourth house. The fourth house is the house of the mother. We just have to memorize those things. Um, so you would look at your mother, the fourth house, one, two, three, four, you know, um, or you go one, two, three, four, fourth house. Now, if you want to know more about your mother in the context of your life, well, yeah, that fourth house will speak to the mother, but then also read the chart from that fourth house, make that now the first house of the mother, and then read the rest of things from that perspective. So say, you have Saturn in Sag. So your Saturn is in your seventh house, maybe giving you some sort of relationship lessons to work on in this life. But if it's for your mother, it's her fourth house. So for your mother, she had a difficult relationship with her mother, perhaps, and felt rejected and, you know, or whatever, and has some lessons. And then, you know, what's fascinating is when you get deeper into studying ancestral karma and the charts of parents and children and whatnot, you see sort of how you inherit certain karmic issues and lessons. Perhaps the mother had an emotional issue that made her emotionally unavailable. So then she raised a kid that was sort of emotionally unavailable. And that's why he has the relationship issues, you see, and needs to, to work out them. And it's all the same thing, just kind of playing out from different angles. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of that hermetic saying from the Western traditions, as above, so below, as below, so above. And, you know, so it's kind of like every single person is a reflection of you and your life. And that's why, and see, astrology literally, because of this, it proves the idea um, that you are, that, you know, you get what you are in life. You get the relationships that reflect you. You get the bosses, the children, the sons, the wife, the etc. that all reflect you and how you treat yourself and your relationship with those things. <clears throat> so the idea of bhavat bhavam is basically counting from house to house to get more information. So for example, um, like uh, the seventh house, again, is the partner. The sixth house from your house has to do with your health issues. The sixth from the seventh has to do with your husband or wife's health issues, which would be the twelfth in your chart or Taurus here. Um, you can read it like this way. You go the seventh. Oh, the sixth from there is the twelfth. So I would read that to learn about um, my partner's health issues. Go from house to house. Hence the term bhavat bhavam. Um... You know, so there's just, there's so many different ways to, to look at this. Um, the, you know, the, the ninth house has a lot to do with our morals and ethics. So the, you know, the ninth from the seventh is your third house. That would have to do with your partner's ethics. Um, <clears throat> you know, just 
lots of things like this. Your older brother is your 11th house. Read from that and then you get more insight on your older brother. More so in the context of your life, but still, you'll just see objective issues, um, objective things about that. Like, for example, I have a, a planet in the 11th house, and I do have an older brother, and I don't have any planets in the 3rd house, and I don't have any younger brothers, and my 3rd lord goes to my 11th. So it's like showing that my brother is going to be an older sibling, which is ruled by the 11th house. Younger siblings are ruled by the 3rd, older siblings are ruled by the 11th. Um, then if I look from there, well, it's fascinating because from there, uh, from my 11th house, Mercury would be in my third and Jupiter. And my brother literally has Mercury and Jupiter in his third house at birth. So it's like literally pro, you know, showing that all in my chart It's showing my brother as well. So it's just really fascinating how, how this plays out. And this is how you get much, much more specific. And this is the thing is that the Vedic tradition just took houses to such a ridiculously detailed and unbelievable level that it seems like Western astrology didn't do. And if you ask me, that is because Vedic astrology lost the signs because they started using the sidereal zodiac trying to quote unquote fix their zodiac and keep it correct when in actuality they were breaking it. And <clears throat> so therefore sign-based techniques like Avashtas, Deep Tati Avashtas, Baladi Avashtas, things like that are really, really big as you'll come to find in Vedic astrology in the texts, but they weren't being used in the oral tradition. <clears throat> it's because a lot of those techniques don't really work that well unless you're using tropical signs. So unfortunately, the more modern era of Vedic astrology doesn't emphasize signs much, or in the last decade with YouTube, they have gotten into it more because of the tropical Vedic astrology movement that <clears throat> has made them kind of feel like you know, notice that they need to use these techniques more. But in a general sense, the modern day Vedic astrology world doesn't really emphasize signs that much. And it emphasizes bhavas a lot more. And that's why you'll see this North Indian chart being used a lot more. But in the tropical Vedic astrology school, which I come from and teach, we, have, we, uh, we tend to use the South Indian chart more because this is where the signs are the same and it emphasizes signs. And a lot of the great techniques we love to use are sign-based techniques. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so yeah, so Bhavat Bhavam is this really, it's not like it's not done in the Western tradition. I'm pretty sure it is, but it's just been taken to an extreme level. And then you also learn, another thing about Bhavat Bhavam is you learn about secondary houses. For example, the third house has to do with your intelligence, your learning, your intellect. The third from the third is the fifth, the house of your education. So, you know, it's like third is where you learn your ABCs. Fifth is where you creatively use your, your ABCs and write poetry or write a story. That would be the fifth. Um, the, uh, what's another good one? Well, the fifth, well, what's the fifth from the fifth is the ninth. So that's why the fifth and the ninth are kind of similar and have similar themes. The ninth from the ninth is back to the fifth. So again, similar themes. Um, <clears throat> the eleventh can have a little bit of a health theme because it's the sixth from the sixth. The third house can have a theme of death and difficulties as well because it's the eighth from it's you know the eighth house and from the eighth it's the eighth, the eighth from the eighth. Sorry, I didn't say that that well. The Seventh is the tenth from the tenth. So again, the seventh is like has to do with your public impact and karmic impact to a degree as well. Um, you can, you should play, you can and should play around with all these ideas just to get a deeper understanding. Um, seventh is the fourth from the fourth. So you know, there's kind of this domestic connection of like the home connects to the wife. You live at home with your wife. You'll just see all these neat little connections or like the other one where the seventh is the tenth from the tenth. Well, the tenth sign is ruled by Saturn normally and Saturn is exalted in Libra the seventh. So there's just like all these neat little connections and you should play around with those on your own. Um, and just, you know, that's that's one way that you're going to learn. And uh, I'm going to read this quote from you guys uh, for you guys from Paula de Pica. Paula Deepika, uh, chapter 15, verse uh, 20 and 21. It's uh, Mantra Shwara says, 
Whenever the effects of any bhava are to be determined in the case of a nativity, that bhava should be considered as the lagna, and the effects of the twelve bhavas reckoned from such as first, second, etc. This should be examined and declared. In the same way, the effects of the father, mother, brother, maternal uncle, son, husband, and servant should be determined by treating the signs occupied by their respective karakas. Example, for example, sun for father, moon for mother, um, and other planets in the nativity as they go. So what it's also telling you is that you can read from the respective karakas. So say, let's just put some random things. Um, Saturn in the seventh again, uh, moon in the fifth, um, Mars in the tenth, uh, sun in fourth. So <clears throat> even though the fourth is your mother, if the sun's in your fourth, you can also read from that and learn about your father because the sun is your fourth house. You could read from your moon sign to learn about your mother. You could read from Saturn's sign to learn about your servants, people you hire, um, you know, landscapers, whatever. Um, that you could read from Mars to learn about your brothers, you know? So that's kind of a really cool idea, too. All right, you guys play with those, and uh, let me know what you think.